So thanks everybody for joining. I know some other people will be coming on the line as we get started. Um, you're welcome to put your name in the chat box and as we're as we go through, we'll, we'll read them off and say hi to you and appreciate your joining us again. I'm Susan, I'm with Environment for the Americas and thanks so much for coming to, to Storytime again this week. We have a great lineup for you and we have a very, very special guest today who is our World Migratory Bird Day artist and I'll introduce her in just a moment. But first we'll go through and just uh, make sure you know what we're doing today. If this is your first story time, then please know that you can join us each Thursday so far. And um, we'll probably be adding some new programs as the, as the month moves on. Uh, and we have our information there. But today what we're going to do is we're gonna meet a bird artist and you can see her on your screen right now. Uh, we're gonna learn how art can help birds. We're gonna learn about John James Audubon and we're gonna read a book about John James Audubon and his art. And then we're gonna give you the opportunity to create your own art. So first, what I'd like to do is let you meet Sherry. Sherry is our artist for the World Migratory Bird Day 2020. And you can see behind me a poster filled with 12 beautiful species um, of birds flying across a map of the world. And Sherry created each and every one of these birds and the, the image behind the birds. And I want, I'm gonna be quiet now and I'm gonna let Sherry talk because now you can see her in her studio. So thanks for joining us, Sherry. Well, thanks, Susan. Um, good morning, everyone. I am delighted to be joining you from here in my rainy, it just started raining, my rainy studio here on the coast of Maine, which is in the far northeast of the United States. I am a printmaker, and so we are in my studio. You can see behind me, this is my great big printing press. Um, I use that when I'm making larger pieces. Um, but for the poster art that I did for World Migratory Bird Day this year, I just did some smaller pieces, and I did each of the birds individually. The technique that I use is called linoleum block, or line of cut printing. And I use, as my art material, I use a piece of linoleum, which is a kind of a flooring material, which is a funny thing to use for an art supply. Um, but I use a sheet of linoleum. This is an uncarved plain one. And I use tools like these. This is a sharp little gouge. I have several different sizes. And I use them to carve marks into the linoleum. And when I'm done doing that, I have something like, trying to find good light, something like this. And I don't know if you can tell from the screen what bird this is, but this is one of the birds from the poster, and this is the American kestrel. So what I do is after I've carved this image onto the linoleum, I take some ink and a roller or a brayer just like this, which those of you who are in school might recognize this from school. And I put some ink out on my surface. The table that I'm working on here is all glass, and that way I can put ink on it and it's easy to clean up. But I'll put ink out on the table and I'll roll it with my roller and then I'll take that ink and roll it on to my linoleum. This is called a block and I'll put a nice layer of ink on top of it. When that's done, I take a piece of paper just like this and I'll lay it on top and then believe it or not a lot of times I take a spoon and I'll rub this paper until I transfer the image onto the paper. Now I didn't roll out any ink just now this morning um, but I have another example to show you of another piece that I did in the same technique. So here's a block that I carved and you probably can't tell what the image is but this is a little bird at a bird feeder here in my yard and when I print it when I printed it initially, so I rolled black ink onto it, and then I printed it onto white paper. So now I have a black and white image. And then when this was dry, when the ink was dry, I got out my watercolor paints and I painted it. So we have now all the colors. 
And that's the technique that I used to make each of the birds for the poster. Here's the kestrel all painted from the block that I showed you at first. So that's the tech that, technique that I use to make my work. And I actually do a more complicated process that we won't get into too much today called reduction printing. And usually when I print multicolor prints, I do them all using one block of linoleum and I print all the different colors one right after the other. So you can maybe see a sample. Let me pull this one down. Here's a piece that I did with lots of colors in it. And it took me many, many layers of color, one right on top of each other. And I think I'm noticing at the bottom of the screen, the picture that Sue has up of me in my studio, that's this very same piece when it was maybe not even halfway finished yet. I do a lot of birds in my, in my art making. Um, as a matter of fact, mostly that's what I do. And I like to do birds because, A, I like to watch them, and I think that they're beautiful, and it's fun to observe them in my yard. But I also think birds are a really important way um, for us to connect and to talk about the environment and to talk about things that are important for birds as well as people. I do a lot of images of birds and water. That's one of my favorite things. And clean and fresh water is important for everybody, not just for us, but for birds and squirrels and bugs and everyone. So um, that's one of the reasons that I like to do a lot of work about birds. Thanks so much, Sherry. And it's so great to see you in your studio. Haven't seen you in person in a long time. To everybody who's watching out there, if you have um, an image of me and Sherry on your screen, and you want it to be larger, you should find a little drag button on the bottom of the video camera or our images that you can make our images bigger. So I think um, most of you, I hope, were able to see Sherry showing her studio. I know some of you wanted to make it bigger. So um, take that image and just drag it. And what it'll do is it'll make the presentation at the bottom smaller. Um, so then you can play with that and make either screen bigger or smaller. But what we're going to do now is we are going to go to our story and this um oh i sorry i wanted to show you first a close up i wanted to show you the image of the birds um, and the poster for 2020 so every year we create this beautiful poster to do just what sherry said which is to share our passion and our love for birds so thanks very much sherry for this amazing job that you did you and guys find, whoops, I was going to say, if you see if you could find this bird on the poster. Yeah, there you go. So we can um, play a little hide and seek with that right now. Uh, but, but also what I'd like to do is share some of John James Audubon's art. So Sherry is an artist that's working um, today to produce art, but there have been artists for many, many years who have focused on birds, and John James Audubon is one of them. So this book is about John James Audubon. Now, this is not his art, but what we've done is we've added a piece of John James Audubon's actual art, an image of it for you to look at. And what we'll do is we'll ask you if you can identify what bird species um, is up on that art, is, is painted by John James Audubon. So, John James Audubon painted birds. He painted nests. And this is a picture of some nests that John James Audubon painted. Anybody have any idea what these nests are made of and what kind of bird might have made these nests? These are pretty weird looking nests, not typical of what you usually see. And Grayson says it's pretty cool, and it is. The way these birds make their nest is that they go out into the mud and they take the mud and then they form it into these nests with what we call cavities kind of like little burrows in the ground, but these are put up onto a wall or on a bridge. And the birds actually lay their eggs inside. And yes, they can use their spit to do this. Um, they, they lay their eggs inside and they raise their young here. Any idea what kind of bird that might be? Well, here we have it. Um, many some a couple of different kinds of swallows do this, and one of them is the cliff swallow. 
he painted eggs. And here's an example of some eggs that John James Audubon painted along with a bird. What kind of bird is this? This is a bird that's really common in your yard. Forest, absolutely not a Baltimore Oriole, but you're close. It might be a bird that you would see in your yard. Anybody else have an idea? All right, we got from the Friganara family, the American Robin. Excellent job. This is the American Robin that John James Audubon painted along with its eggs. Beautiful blue eggs. He painted beaks. And here is a bird with a fantastically large beak. And John James Audubon, this is how he painted it. Anybody know what kind of bird this is? All right, from the McGuire family, we have pelican. Excellent job. It is a pelican. He painted legs, and certainly birds have some fantastic legs. John James Audubon's image of this bird looks like this, and who knows what this is? Okay, from the Alvarado family, we have flamingo. Excellent job. This is a flamingo with its incredibly long legs. He painted eyes. And who knows what kind of bird this is that John James Audubon painted. Ah, very good. Again, I've got answers from the Friganara family from the Rowan family, from the McGuire family, and we have Snowy Owl. So excellent, excellent job, that's correct. He painted wings, and certainly if you look closely at birds, they have so many different types of wings. It was actually a little hard to find which bird the artist for the book took from John James Audubon's art. But this is the art that I think she used, although <laughs> this bird isn't carrying a leaf in its bill because this bird is actually a raptor and it eats meat. And thank you from the Hildreth family who says, yes, an eagle, a bald eagle. We've got Grayson answering and Hector and Abigail also. So thank you very much. Good job. For birds to fly. This is a beautiful image of a bird in flight. This is a bird that actually lives where I live. And if you know it, then you probably live somewhere in the West. So I'm waiting to see who can figure this one out. With its beautiful wings and its long tail that sometimes looks green, but not always. Oh, don't have any answers yet. Oh, I've got a question mark. I've got a couple people. All right, the Williston family says magpie, the Rowan family and the Friganara family. Good job, this is a black-billed magpie with beautiful wings and a beautiful tail. Up high and sing. And I chose this one because it's so obviously singing its heart out and this is a bird that really sings quite loudly. Um, for those of you who live in the East especially, you might hear this bird and it might actually even be um, in your yard, so it can be a common bird too. So yes, very good, this is a wren. You can tell by its kind of slightly curved bill and its uh, barred feathers. And it is a Carolina wren. Good job from the Marsh family, the Rowans, the Alvarados, and the Williston. Oops, not the Williston's this time, but good job. John James Audubon painted birds. And that is the end of the story. So now we have an activity for all of you. These are two bits of art that Sherry actually created for us um, to help you create a piece of art about birds. So what we hope is that you have all of these items out in front of you that you might need if you're going to paint. A paper plate if you're using paint. I came up with a few items, Sherry, because I actually could not find any paint in the office. I'm not sure what happened to it, but I have to <laughs> know just in case. I also have my paper for our art. I have, in case I did have paint, I had something to put over my clothes. And then I had some colored pencils. 
Um, in case you don't have paint, you could also just trace an item with a pencil, a crayon, colored pencils, whatever you might have. But what I want you to do is to look at this picture first. And this is kind of um, like a, can you find it picture? So when you look at this picture, um, you see that I pointed from the bird in the top left's beak to the clothespin because that's what Sherry used to make the beak. She dipped it in paint and she made the beak from the clothespin. And she made the grass from the fork. She used a bottle to make this cool pattern for the outside of the owl's face. And she used this bubble wrap to make the grass that the owl is standing on. So what we would like for you to do, Sherry, do you have any other instructions for them before we send them off? No, I think just find some objects that are number one, if you're gonna put paint on them, they need to be washable. So check with your parents before you stick anything in paint. Um, but yes, I just pick things that I can find around the house um, and surprising little things like this is the cap of a pen and the end of a pen cap will make a great little circle. So it doesn't have to be anything too special. Little scraps of cardboard are great. Um, the eraser from a pencil will make a little dot. So anything that you think might make an interesting, an interesting texture or an interesting shape, um, see what you can find. It works best with little bitties if we have something to hold on to. So something with a handle like a fork or a piece of foam that's big and grippy. Um, little tiny things are maybe hard to manipulate. But um, I even have here though, I have a paper clip, but I unbent it a little bit so it has a handle. Um, so take three minutes to find some things. Okay, we're gonna give them three minutes and we're gonna ask them to come back with three to five items. And then we have some participants from the Middleton family who we're going to put on camera to share what they found. All right. All right. Three minutes. Ready, set, go. And once you get back, if you want to start putting in your uh, little chat box here, some of the things that you found, that would be great. So if you can type in what you found. I'm going to show you what I found, Sherry, while we're waiting for them. I found this. It's pretty cool. It has little dots on nice. the bottom. I have no idea what this is. I was <laughs> in the office, but I thought it was kind of cool because it has a neat little pattern underneath it. Yeah, that'll be neat. Yeah, that would make something nice. And then I have one more item. Oh, yeah, yeah. I copied you and I took a fork because I thought okay. that a really interesting pattern. All right. We have someone else who comes back with a clothespin, a fork, a spoon, a pine cone. Oh, oh yeah, and pasta shapes. We've got a pine lid, a broken zipper pull, oh. an avocado pit and a jar, oh. a, rock, a pine cone and a sponge. Oh. How about, um, from the Middleton family, can you unmute yourselves and share with us your names, your ages and what you found? Abigail, there you go. How old Did you, you want to introduce yourself? Um, how old are you? Four. Four and a half. Oh, yeah, four and a half. And what was your name again? What's your name? Alden. Great. Thanks, Alden. And your sister? My name's Henrietta, and I'm six and a half. Yeah, and where do you guys live? We live in Blacksburg, Virginia. Oh, I love Blacksburg. I used to go to Mountain Lake. Oh, you lucky oh. <laughs> Long time ago. I'm going to come visit you because I've been dying to go back and see Mountain Lake again. So can you share with us what you found? 
Um, we got these like little spatula thingies. We got a paper roll. We got a masher. Okay. Oh, nice. We got like the little spiky ball thing. We got some keys. Oh, that's <laughs> we'll see if those go in the paint, right? <laughs> we got a little, we like, got a little bit of cans. Uh-huh. Okay, so Abigail, do they have paint? We, have we do thing. have paint, yes. We okay. got this like, cool design thing right here, and we got some toothpicks. We got this piece of wood. Wow, you guys have a lot. That's great. Yeah. What we're going to do for Alden and Henrietta is we're going to have Sherry start, and you guys follow, and then we'll know how the rest of the crew is doing on the program with their art project. All right. Lead so away. The, first thing I, the first thing I did was I put, well, the very first thing I did is I have a piece of paper to make my picture on. Yes. And then I put some paint in a plate. And paint I'm going to board. take just a little piece of cardboard and I'm going to spread that out a little bit. Because if it's in a big glop, it doesn't work very well. So I'm just going to spread it out a little bit. What color do you want, Hannah? Blue. You. Here's your plate. And then I'm going to look at my objects, and I have a potato masher too. My potato masher is a different shape, but I like my potato masher because I think it made a great bird body. It could also be, I don't know, it could be a big wing, it could be all kinds of things, but I think that's what I want to use again for my bird body. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it straight down in my paint and get some paint on the bottom of it. And then I'm going to pick it up and decide which way I want my bird's body to go. And I'm going to press it straight down on the paper and push and lift it up. All right, thanks for adjusting the camera, Abigail. It's fun to see Alden and Henrietta at work. Pretty cool. Very cool, Sherry. Then I'm going to pick another object and see what else I want to use. I have a paper cup. Maybe I'll use that for my bird's head. So I'm going to do the same thing. Just stick my cup in the paint. And then press it down. Changing my mind. It happens all the time. Changing my mind about what I want my bird to look like. Press it down. All right, and now I have a head. And I'm going to just keep using different objects and see what I can make. I have another color of paint here. I have some yellow. And I'm going to spread it out just like before. Hmm, I think my bird needs a beak. I have this piece of sponge. It's kind of in a triangle shape. That might make a good bird beak. I'm going to stick it in the paint. Get a little more on there. That looks pretty good. Press it down. My bird has a big beak. <laughs> How are you guys doing? What have you got going on there? So while, while you're making your art, if you have any questions for Sherry about being an artist or about bird art in general, um, why don't you go on and put them on and we'll have her answer those questions while you're doing your art. If anybody would like to share their art on camera, I have two more spots and I could let someone else go on the camera and share what they've done. So right now we'll take um, a few minutes for questions and we'd love to see some of your bird art. And if anybody wants to send us a photo of their bird art, we will make that, we will make that public and share that with all of the folks that join us for Bird Day Live is also, also for those who come to our Facebook or Instagram sites so that they can see what you're doing on Thursdays during story time. You can send that information, of course, 
to our website and I'll change the slide here so you can see oops, where that is and what our next show is, which is uh, the Raven and the Moon and the Oyster Catcher next week, which is a Native American tale. And so you can always write us at info at environmentamericas.org. And this is a good time again, if you have any questions. So we have a good question from Forrest. How does Sherry decide which birds to paint and what backgrounds to paint? Oh, that's a really good question. I like to draw birds that I know, that I see myself in my yard. And so I take a lot of walks. And a lot of the work that I do is of birds that I see on my walks in my neighborhood. Um, the little sparrows that I showed you before on the snow fence, that was something that I actually saw happening in my neighborhood. Um, and so I thought that was a really interesting pattern that the fence made. I'll pull it back out again. I liked, I liked how the fence posts made a little pattern and to put some birds on top of it. And so for me, that was a nice, a nice design and a nice memory of a sunny day in the early spring when things are just starting to turn green. And this is a snow fence that they're on. In the West, we have a lot of snow fence. It keeps the snow from blowing into places you don't want it to blow. And this was snow fence with no snow on it. So to me, that meant spring. But I also like to do a lot of birds, like I said, a lot of birds in water. And right now I live by the ocean, but I used to live in Colorado. And when I lived in Colorado, I lived near a river and near a pond. And so I spent a lot of time in those places. Here's one that I just finished just this week. Oh, that's of a family of geese. Whoop, trying to get it in the good light. There we go. A family of geese on a lake. And that was a family that I saw also in the early spring. And so that's how I decide things that I see. So now we have another really hard question for you from Cadence. Okay. And I know Cadence. Cadence, I knew you when you were in a car seat. And I know <laughs> you're in Colorado. So Cadence wants to know why you like doing art so much. Why do I like doing it? That is a hard question. Because I tell you what, some days, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. some days art, believe it or not, some days art is hard. Um, I like to make images to share with people and then I can talk to them about the things. It's a, it's a way for me to connect with people. I have a piece um, that I did and I don't have one right here, but that I did of ducks at the pond. And I don't know if you've ever been to a pond where people feed the ducks when they're not supposed to. But they feed the ducks and when the ducks see people, they come straight to the shore because they think they're going to get fed. And I have a piece that I did that's about that. And what's really fun for me is to have that piece maybe in a show somewhere and someone will come and see the piece and they'll have a story of a very similar event. They say, oh, this will remind, it will remind them of something. Oh, this reminds me of the day when and they can tell me a story about something that happened to them. And I can tell them a story about something happened to me. And we can, we can connect with each other over that particular piece of art that I made. And I think that's really special. Yeah, that's great, Sherry. And I know that I always connect to your art. It's just so beautiful for one thing. And also uh, reminds me of birds I've seen because we've been to some of the same places. But right now I wanna um, give um, Alden and Henrietta a chance to show their art. Is your art in a we can see it? Okay, so you have to stand still for just a minute and let the camera adjust. Oh, good job. Oh, it looks great. Good job, you guys. Thank you. That's so it's awesome. easy. Thanks for sharing. You at home, right, Sherry? <laughs> Yeah, that looks great. Yeah. I'm the road runner. 
Oh, it's a road runner. Do you see road runners in Blacksburg, Virginia? No. no. Okay. Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty hard. <laughs> but good job um, for no. Do you know any um birds that are green? Do I know any birds that are green? That are green. I do. There's a bird in Colorado where I used to live called green tailed toey. That's a cool bird. Cool. When you think about birds that tend to be green, you can think about birds like parrots. Um, a lot of green feathers. Yeah. Um, Hector wanted to know if you have a favorite bird that you like to draw. Yeah, my favorite bird. <laughs> Well, I have, let's see, favorite birds, that's, that's hard because it seems like every time I, I, um, I have lots of favorite birds, but one of my most favorites is a bird called the gannet, and it's a seabird, and when it dives, this bird goes, it flies above the ocean, and when it dives, it puts its wings into this very pointy V, just like an arrow and it dives straight down into the water to catch fish and i think that's really cool and i love those birds i think they're really interesting so again but i learned a lot about birds every time i draw one i learn something new so i think that's pretty cool too yeah and it really makes you notice the details so we'd love to see some more of your art if you want to send it to us send it to info at environmentamericas.org and Ryan would like to show his bird. So Sarah, I'm gonna find you and um, let you join so that he can, all right. So Ryan, we'd love to see your bird. Our theme this Our year, theme this year is um yeah we can't see anything but can you see us your camera is not on uh oh well that would that would be <laughs> there's an icon with a camera. There. There you go. Here's, oops, Ryan, can you stand up a little? Here's Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Ryan. He has really enjoyed all of these. And here see. is his bird. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Look at that cool little pattern around there. That's great. That's hey, Ryan. Fun. Share with us what you used to make that. This is, it's part of a toy kitchen. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, and then what did you make out of this? What did you put this on? What part was this? His bill. His bill. Excellent. And this is to make popsicles. And this was his, his wings. Excellent. And this has his um and this was his feet. Those are his feet. And then, and then, and then, where, where are you calling in from, Sarah? We're from just south of Baltimore, Maryland. Excellent. So we're Baltimore, Maryland. We have Maine, we have Virginia, we have Colorado, and now um Mariana. Uh, the Ludrak family would like to join us, so I'm going to find them, and I'm going to mute you, Sarah. Sure. I'm trying to find um, your name for Mariana, so I have to find your name and give you permission to come on. So let me find that there we go it's erica um, so erica i'm giving you permission to share your camera 
And if you want to introduce Mariana, you'll need to click on the camera by your name. Oh, hold on. Okay, hold on. Let's wait. Cody in the meantime. Okay. Oh, hello, Hi. Mariana and Mom Erica. Hi. Hi. Oh, there we go. There we are. Do you want to show? So we're not doing the painting because I just was having to work. So we just did some drawing. Okay, that's good. Do you want to explain yours? Let's oh, wow. See. That's very good. <laughs> nice. Those are great. The little page. Show the little page. A very <laughs> good, Mariana. And how old are you, Mariana? And um, four and a half. Wow. Okay. Nice to meet you. And where, are you, where do you live, Mariana? Do you know what, remember the town that we live in? Antarctica. New York. Mm -hmm. All right. You live in a great birdie place. Antarctica, New York. Yeah. We go to our friends at Cornell and do a lot of Yeah, we work. went to the we went to the um the bird walk, the lab of ornithology the other day, right? And we yes. went to the clock tower. Yep. We went to the clock tower. Also, also the clock tower. Nice. <laughs> so. Good. So Again, you know, our, our conservation theme, we have one every year, and this year it's Birds Connect Our World. And so what we love is that no matter where you are, birds are traveling across the world and around the world, and they help to connect us in different ways, like today, mm -hmm. through story time and art. So it's always fun. Sherry, I want to thank you so much for being on with us today. Does anybody well, else have final so question? Any thank comments? You. My hand well, down thank you all for for joining me today. It was great to see your work and great to spend some time with you and Hi. hear our mutual excitement about birds. And I hope you'll keep making more art about birds and that you'll share it with Susan um, so that we can see it on the World Migratory Bird Day website, maybe. Yeah. Send your art in. We'd love to share it. And thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again next week. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.